welcome back to Click Video Mag. Here's another one of our tips and tricks. You might have seen our first episode moving from green mode into programmed. Mm. This is step two, step two, getting off program mm. and moving into TV and AV. Start pushing those muscles a little bit. Indeed, well, mm. uh, not exercising the brain as well. So mm -hmm. TV essentially stands for time value, AV stands for aperture value. Aperture value. So first things first, TV, time value. It's all about shutter speed. And when we start talking about shutter speeds, we're talking about either freezing motion or blurring motion. So TV, the higher the shutter speed, the more you're gonna freeze something. Yep. As you go down the shutter yeah. speeds, the more you're gonna blur motion. I think, I think a great example, taking a picture of a waterfall. Yeah, or, or a fountain, yeah. for that matter. Yeah, Something yeah. With, with water running. So cool, cool. taking a picture, getting, getting the things frozen. And what do people mostly do? They dial down the shutter speed and what happens? The camera overexposes to hand back. Yeah, yeah. So or, or they forget that they, um, you know, with a low shutter speed, you also comes camera shake. Yeah. Uh, and these are the most critical things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the bottom line is there's a rule of thumb. If you've got a 50 millimeter lens, 60th is where you where you kind of hold it. Below be. 60th, you're gonna start getting camera shake, bit of blur, get yourself a tripod. Get a tripod. Um, but as, as you were saying quite rightly, let's have a look at these, a couple of these little images mm. in terms of a fountain shot at a thousandth of a yeah, second. And, take and it, as we take go it down the steps slowly, yeah. slowly, slowly. And you'll notice how a drop of water becomes a line, a blur, a streak, etc., and, and, and an entire curve. And th this is, as you quite rightly said, waterfalls. What a great way to practice. Waterfalls. Um, and, and this is the thing that we, we find a lot of people get started getting creative with mm. when they first start playing with TV, camera, tripod, remote control. Remote control is a damn good investment. That's awesome idea. If you can't find a waterfall, put the sprinkler on in the garden. Well, yeah, just, uh, just after six. Indeed. Just yeah. after six. But where you can get the most control is if you've got waterfalls with shade. Yeah. Because uh, the slow shutter speeds then won't won't over overexpose. Put the camera on the tripod, set, select a, a crazy low shutter speed, and then you get that water moving over the, lock, the rocks like a white blanket. And start, start experimenting. Realize that now you're getting too much light and you need to change something else in this little triangle we call exposure. You need to adjust something. Absolutely. Um, we spoke a while ago about uh, air shows, about using TV to, to get the motion blur in, in in regards to the propeller or even when shooting motorsports. Yeah. When you're panning across across a, a plane and you want the car to appear to be moving, you need to get that shutter speed a little bit lower yeah. than just that instant burst. And the, the cool thing with, with time value, um, you've still got a, it's a semi-automatic setting. Mm -hmm. So you still have automatic ISO, you still selected um, the shutter speed, the camera will select the best aperture for that. So this is the combination, it is a semi-automatic. Uh, yeah. That's what time value essentially is. Yeah. And as is, aperture value. Now, Correct. this is the next thing along there, going on to AV. Still semi-automatic. So mm -hmm. you're choosing an aperture, the camera's gonna choose the best, best ISO and, and the best shutter speed, speed yeah. for what you're shooting. And again, that's something you need to check very, very carefully. The camera will warn you if your shutter speed's too low, it'll flash more, mm -hmm. more often than not on the mm -hmm. entry-level kind yeah. of cameras. On the pro cameras may not necessarily flash, but you might get a little exclamation mark. Exclamation mark yeah. um, if the shutter speed is too low, it'll let you take the picture anyway but you watch out for, for, for blur. And in that kind of situation, small, cheap, lightweight tripod, put it on a log, rest on a, on a rock, use the self timer, or even better, get yourself the remote yeah, control. Just look around, there's always something that you can rest the camera on. So it's always. Aperture um, value. Is aperture about, value. It's about getting that amount of light through the front of the nose of the camera, but it's got certain problems. Indeed. And, and most, most importantly, what people use AV for is about controlling depth of field. Mm. Now depth of field is, uh, if I'm focused one point, how much is in front and out behind it that is also in focus. Good example, wedding photographs. Yeah. With the bride and the groom and everything else in the background is just blown completely away. That's Correct. a great example for yep. me about what's happening with depth of field. So the, the smaller the aperture, the smaller the amount of depth of field. So this lens, for example, is a 2.8. 2.8 is gonna give me a very, very narrow area depth of field. So if I focus on the lady's face, the trees and everything behind her are out of focus. That lens, for example, is a 5.6. That's a much bigger area depth of field. So bigger depth of field means more is in focus in the, in the picture. So aperture value is often used in a situation where you either want more in focus, yep. if you want landscape, so you go to F8, F11, because you want the house, the trees, the forest, the mountains, <laughs> the everything ice. in focus yeah, yeah. all the way through, or for the converse, if you want to do portraits. Portraits, where you don't or, want the background to show. Correct, where you've got a lady standing with a tree behind yeah. her. If you had F11, she's got mm, branches, branches coming out of her head. head. If you then turn the lens down to F2.8, F4, you blow the background out quite nicely. Good things to remember. Indeed. Yeah, and again, please remember that's still semi-automatic. Yeah. So you're choosing the f-stop, it'll choose the best shutter you're speed. You're choosing one, camera decides the other. If speed. you have a low light environment, 
the camera will look at what lens you've got and try and give you a, a, a safe shutter speed if it has automatic ISO. It'll try and compromise, So if yeah. you don't have automatic ISO, you might have to manually dial up your ISO uh, on some of the older cameras. But those are the no most important next steps. Mm. And we've slowly moved away from fully automatic to semi-automatic. Semi next step, full manual. E gosh, nervous stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers.